All right, guys, let's start with pneumatics lab number one. Now, I'm going to go through this nice and slow. Once we actually show you at the end how to hook this first lab up, you're going to be like, oh, my God, that was so simple. Um, but what I want you to do is just center in on how I'm building up the 3-2, how it's connected into the source, how it goes to the, the single acting cylinder. Um, if you're doing these labs, you can just fly through them. Right? And if we're doing them in pairs, oftentimes one person is doing a lot of the work and the other person is on Facebook. So make sure that you make you put the time in, go back and forth, right? If the first partner does the first lab, second person does the second lab. So you're going back and forth uh, between you. I'm going to give you the first 10 labs and you're going to use those basics because they're very basic labs. Um, and you're going to build those up to do the, the harder labs. I believe there's like 16 to 18 labs that I've given you. Um, if you haven't paid attention for the first 10 labs, you're going to be lost. You won't have any clue what's going on. If you stick with me for the first 10 labs, though, then you'll get the basics. And then it's awesome. Then you're rocking and rolling, and you're working through the harder circuits. And it's actually a lot of fun uh, to try and work through the logic on um, how to get that circuit to actually work with the basics that I provide you with. Okay, so let's start off with this first one. So we've got a single acting cylinder. So that is just a single <clears throat> port, and there's a spring inside to retract it to the initial position. What else do we need? We're going to use a normally closed, manually operated 3-2 push button. So we've got a push button that's normally closed, and we've got a single acting cylinder. As long as the push button is pressed, the cylinder is to remain in the extended position. Okay, makes sense. Push the push button, and the cylinder extends. And once you let go of the, the push button, the cylinder is to retract. Uh, to the rest position. Okay, the more information that uh, you put onto your labs, the more that you'll have to, to study from later on. And I'm going to show you the, the Festo fluid sim that we have in the lab. So you're going to do it on paper, on the trainer boards, and on the fluid sim as well. And everything's going <clears> to <throat> kind of laser etch those components into your mind. Okay, so let's see. We need a, a normally closed push button and we need a single acting cylinder. Okay, single acting cylinder looks like this, where it has the one port. When we put that air to that one port, it's going to push against the spring and extend the cylinder. Once we release that air from the, the cylinder, then the spring retracts it to the initial position. Okay, so this would be your rest position for the single acting cylinder. Okay, looks like this, All right? Single port, once you put air to here, then it's going to extend the cylinder. Excellent. Okay, we're also talking about direct control. We're going to get into indirect control later on, but direct control is just by pushing the, the push button, then we're going to have direct control over the actuator. Indirect control would be pushing the push button, controls a relay, that relay controls the, the actuator. So direct control is by pushing the push button, you have direct control over the output. Okay, that's our circuit right there, uh, but let's build it up slowly. Okay, so pneumatics lab number one, we need to start with <clears throat> a box or more a rectangle. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to separate this into uh, two positions of this switch. And for these guys, it said that there was going to be um, a push button control. So we're going to put a push button on the end here. Okay, on the other side, we're going to put a spring because the push buttons that we're using uh, are spring actuated in that when you let go of the push button, then it's going to return to its rest state. Okay, next thing we need um, is our ports. So there are, <clears throat> there are three ports to these guys. And in the rest position, it said that this guy was a normally closed valve. So I'm going to block one. Then we've got two other ports that we're going to make use of. Okay, that's one position of the, the switch. Now I need to supply that switch with some air. So there are sexier ways to do this, but I'm just going to use uh, a triangle here to denote my compressed air source. Okay, that guy is going up to my first port. So I'm going to label that port number one. That's my supply. Okay, going from there, I'm going to go to my single acting cylinder. 
So I'm just going to draw in a single acting cylinder. And a single acting cylinder needs a way for it to <clears throat> retract. So there's a spring in there to retract that cylinder. Excellent. Now I need to have a tube going from my push button to that single acting cylinder. That's the output. So the output is going to be labeled number two. Okay, hydraulics is a, a closed system, pneumatics is an open system, meaning that <clears throat> once the circuit is finished doing its work, then the compressed air is exhausted out to atmosphere. So we need to incorporate an exhaust here. So we'll throw in an exhaust port, and that guy is labeled number three. Okay, on the other side, or the other position of uh, this valve, then we have the exact same port. So I've got port one, port 2, and port 3, similar to these guys that we have, 1, 2, and 3. Exact same ports, but they're going to be <coughs> performing a different function. In the other position of the switch, we're going to have air going from 1 up to 2. And at that point, we're going to block off our exhaust. And that's it. That's our diagram for the first lab. Okay, all we need to do is just kind of throw in the rest of the information to make everything clear now. So, port 1 went to our supply. Port 2 went to the actuator. Easy now, what's going on there? And port 3 is the exhaust. Okay, the only thing we have to hook up though is port number 1 and port number 2. Port number 3 is integral to the actual switch. So you don't have to hook anything up to the exhaust. It just is integral port portion of that switch, nothing to hook up whatsoever. What else do we have that we can take off this diagram? Well, this guy right here, this spring, That's going to tell us the rest state. Okay, meaning that when that spring <clears throat> causes that push button to go back to its rest position, then this portion of our rectangle will be the rest position for that switch. This portion that corresponds to the push button, that's going to be our activated portion of the switch. Okay, this switch that we're using is called a 3-2. I'm manually operated but push button actuated valve. Okay, what does the 3 and the 2 denote? The 3 denotes the number of ports. The 2 denotes the number of positions of the switch. Okay, we said that this guy was normally closed, so it's a little bit backwards, in that everything electrically is kind of backwards from um, PLCs or from pneumatics. So normally we would think of a normally closed contact like this, meaning that current could go through to our load. In this case, when they say normally closed, it's acting more like a normally open contact, electrically speaking, meaning that it is normally closed to the passage of air. So you'll find the same thing when we get into PLCs. Everything's a little backwards from the way that we normally look at contacts. So this guy is a normally closed pneumatic <clears throat> contact in that it is normally closed to the passage of air. And you can see that the air source is blocked by that T connection there. Okay, any air that was trapped inside of that cylinder, once it extends, 
the spring is going to push it back, and then we've provided a way for that air to exhaust out of three. Okay, that's everything we need for this diagram. I'm going to pause it here, and I'll bring up the, uh, the Festo fluid sim, and we'll be able to simulate this on the screen. Okay, so now we're going to simulate lab number one. So we've opened up the Festo fluid sim. This is the student version. If you want more bells and whistles, uh, then you can page for uh, the full version. But this is good enough for us. The only drawback to this uh, student version is that you can only have two actuators on your screen. It won't allow you to simulate three actuators. Uh, I believe it won't allow you to print either. So if we go to file, uh, the print is not an option, right? But again, you can, once we build up our circuit, you can always hit print screen, go to paint, and then drop it in, right? So if I show you that, let's see, uh, my print screen is I have to hit a number of buttons at the same time, but I'll print screen, then I'm going to go over here to paint, paste it in, and then there's your exact circuit is there. So if you feel a need to print out any of your labs, hit print screen, go over to paint, drop it in, and you can save each of the, the pictures from each of your labs. Okay, going back to this fluid sim, you're going to open up a, a new window. So this window is not usually there. Similar to a Word document, you're going to go up, open up a new window, and now you have a new workspace to work into. So what do we start with? We started with a compressed air supply. So we're going to drop in our compressed air supply. Okay, that looks a little bit small, so we're going to zoom in. Now, the only issue with this guy is that when you zoom in, you have to change your, your window now to match with it. Okay, let's go a little bit more. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, and then I'm going to drop in each of my components. Ah, yes, there we go. Now we can actually see what we're doing. Okay, so compressed air supply. Uh, the other thing we needed was a 3-2 normally closed valve. Uh, that was mechanically operated. So we're going into mechanically operated push buttons. Looking for a 3-2, but again we need one that is a 3-2 uh, normally closed. So this one here we can just make out to normally open. We need this guy right here, a 3-2 normally closed push button. Right on, we'll line it up with our air supply here. And the other thing that we needed for that first diagram was a single acting cylinder. So we're going to grab this guy, drag and drop it in. I'm just going to line that guy up like this. Excellent. Now we need to hook everything up. We're going to hover over each of these ports. So from our compressor, I'm going to click, bring that up until I see green, and let go. Those guys are now connected in. From my port number two, I'm going up to my single acting cylinder, and that circuit is complete. Okay, A lot nicer than the diagram I had put on. You can see that there's a little bit of um, misleading here. This port, this number one, that corresponds to this guy right here. Port number two is here, and port number three for our exhaust is here. Okay, so don't get misled in that they have these numbers uh, over to the left a little bit. The spring is denoting our rest state, and our push button is denoting our activated state. Excellent. The cool thing about this simulator is not only can you do a nice clean diagram, but you can simulate this program, this circuit as well. So we're going to go to the start. It'll tell us whether we have any open connections or whether we've <clears throat> missed something there. You can see here with this dark blue here that this is where the air is being supplied to my 3-2. And you can see that it's blocking the air at this point. Watch this. I love it. Press this. That activates the switch and it's now moved over to the activated position of the switch and now air is going up to my single acting cylinder and it's now extended. If I let go of the switch then it just goes back and that spring pushes it back. If you want to maintain a switch in its position hit the shift key and then click. Then you can let go and it will stay there until you click the button and release. Okay, Awesome way. Nice simple circuit. Uh, but a very cool way in that you can build it up and then simulate your circuit as well. Again, we're limited to two actuators, so when we get into uh, more complicated circuits, uh, we won't be able to use this simulator. But it's good enough to work through the first few labs uh, and get the basics 
see it working, and then go and wire it up. So let's wire it up in for real, and we'll see how easy this lab is. All right, guys, lab number one, nice and easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, from our manifold here. That's going to go into our push button. Okay, we're going into the left hand side for the supply. Right, we turn this guy on. That's going to provide us air to our actuator. And then we just need another hose here going from our push button to our single acting cylinder with a single port. And again, remember it's got the spring return. Okay, this guy goes into our single port. And then as soon as we hit the push button, ta -da, it extends. Let her go and it retracts. Nice and simple, right? But in this one, you figured out that this is here a tuck valve and that it won't allow air to go through until you engage that tube. You found that you have to put this to the right side of the actual push button in order to work. If you put it to the other side, then it'll just exhaust it. Okay? I can yank on this and it's never going to come out. So we're going to be nice and gentle. We're going to push slightly and then release. Okay? So again, lab number one. Nice and simple. It extends. Alright guys, thanks. Go on to lab number two.